In this tutorial, we're going to create this pair using NURBS surfaces. I'm going to start out by going to my Create menu, and I'm going to use my top view. I'll hold down the space bar, I'll go to Create, NURBS primitives, and I'll choose the sphere, and in the top view, I'll drag and introduce my sphere. I'm going to go to an orthographic view to shape this sphere similar to the tutorial file to the right. A NURB sphere is edited by right click and choosing control vertex. When I do so, the vertices around the perimeter of my NURB sphere are floating away from the surface itself. And that signifies that if we were to edit these points, we're going to get a very soft organic kind of an edit similar to what we see here. I'm going to start by dragging through the entire series of Bezier points here. I'll hit my scale tool and I'll start to constrict it. I'll hit W and I'll move it down. I'm going to go to the next row and I'm dragging broadly through that group as well so that I get all the vertices that are directly behind it in 3D space. I'll move the set down and maybe I'll scale it. It's really kind of an organic process at this point. But if I was to go to my perspective view now and zoom in on that edit, you can see our shape is symmetrical because we grabbed and edited the entire series across the entire piece of geometry. I'm going to stay in my perspective view and I'm now going to go back to my object mode for my geometry. And in the object mode, I'll scale this up a little bit. And the next thing I want to do is create the stem. And that's going to be done using a NURBS comb. So once again, I'll hold down the space bar. We'll go to Create, NURBS Primitives, and Cone. Now the cone is a two-step piece of geometry. I would drag the circumference of the base of the cone, let go, put my cursor away from the disk, and in this instance I want the tip of the cone to be down, so I'm going to click and drag down. And when I let go, I have the cone I want. Now I want this to rest on top just like the sample to the right. So I'm going to return to my orthographic views. And in my side orthographic view, I'm going to drag the cone and put it at the top of the pair. Now this is only one view in which I've moved it. I'm going to go to either the top view or to the front view and do the same. And if I were to return to my perspective view now, the cone is situated roughly where I'd like it to be. Now it's got to be smaller in circumference at the base as well as smaller in scale. So I'm going to go to one of my orthographic views again. And if my geometry is still selected, I can hit F on the keyboard. I'm going to move the pivot from the middle down to the tip of the cone. I'll hold D on the keyboard, and with the Y axis, I'll drag straight down. This will allow me to scale. I'm going to hit R to make it smaller. Now I'm going to edit this so it looks a little bit more organic. If we look at the sample here, you can see it's got a bit of a bend, which makes it look a little bit more natural. So I'll zoom in on the cone. I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to choose Control Vertex. I'm now going to grab a series of vertices at the top. I'll drag it to the side. I'll get my scale tool to taper it. I'll click and drag through the next series, and I'll scale it as well. Now if I return to my perspective view, I have pretty much what I want. I'm going to return to the object mode. We're now going to make the leaf. And to make that leaf that we see here, it's going to require us to use a CV curve tool to draw the shape. Now the leaf is pretty much horizontal in the context of the pair. So I'm going to introduce a CV curve in the top view. I'm going to select the stem or the pair so that when I go to my top view now, I can hit F on the keyboard and it's going to take me into the general area where the leaf will end up once I'm done. I'm zooming back by holding the Option key in the right mouse 
And if I drag up, I can zoom back a little bit to give myself a little bit more space to draw the path. I'm going to hold down the space bar. I'm going to go to Create, CV Curve Tool. I'm going to make sure it's set for two. And I'm going to draw a path that resembles the shape of a leaf. And I'm going to drop the points I feel I need. If I am in doubt about how many I need, it's better to drop more than less. It's easier to delete these points than it is to add them. I'm going to stop short of where I began. And I'm going to hit return so that my path closes out as an object and becomes green. I'm going to hit center the pivot. And then I'm going to close that path out. I'm going to do so by holding down the space bar. And in the middle of the hot box, you're going to see the word curves. I'm going to click on curves. And I'm going to go to the middle of the drop down menu. I'm going to click on the word open close. And now my path is closed. The next thing I need to do is fill that in as a piece of geometry. I've hit five on the keyboard so that when I do use the planar function to close it out, it will fill in and I'll see that it has a piece of geometry. With the path selected, I'll hold down the space bar and the term directly next to the word curves where we just closed out our path is the word surfaces. The second available term from the top is planar. I'm going to go to the attributes by clicking on the white box at the far right. I'll choose edit reset settings and I'll hit apply. And there's my leaf shape. Now once again, I'm going to center the pivot and I'm going to edit this now so that it has a contour that's more three-dimensional. Right now, if I go to my perspective view and hit F to preview it, it's a very flat surface. Now, if I wanted to edit the perimeter of this shape, I could do so by selecting that curve and right-clicking and choosing Control Vertex. Now, I can select this. And I can edit this in my x-axis, or if you want it in the top view, and you'll see you because of the history, you can alter the shape of the leaf. But if you were to do this in your perspective view, and you were to edit on the y-axis, when you drag down, the geometry breaks. So I'm going to select the geometry, and I'm going to delete by type history so the path is no longer influential on that geometry. Because the next thing I want to do is make this look more like a leaf. So I've got my geometry selected. I'm going to right click and choose Control Vertex. And I'm going to drag all these vertices, these two lines of vertices through the middle of the leaf. And I'm going to drag up on the Y axis. And you'll see that you get this bow shape that is starting to look more the way a leaf would relax uh, if it were attached to a branch, or in this case, our stem on our pair. Now I'm going to click and drag in the front and I'll pull that down so if I look now I've got something that's a lot more naturalistic. You can always go in and edit these singular, singularly if you choose. But now I've got what I want so I'll return back to my object mode. Now I want to put this up by the stem of the pear shape that's here. So I'll start by going to my top view and I'm going to take the pivot and move it to the edge of the leaf where it would naturally attach to the stem. So once again, I'm going to hold down D on the keyboard. And here I'm going to drag on my Z axis and maybe a little bit on the X. I'll let go. And with my move tool, I'll put it into the general area where it will go. Now I'm going to hit four on the keyboard so I can see through this a little bit better. Then I'm going to go to an orthographic view. And I'm going to drag it up to the position I'd like to have the leaf be. Now I'm going to go to my perspective view. And I'll hit F on the keyboard. And now I'll begin to fine tune it. I might move my pivot to the very edge there. And I'll hit R to scale. And I'll scale it like so. And that's pretty much how we use NURB surfaces to create a nice organic shape.